Do your genes determine your happiness? Well, I am living proof, being adopted myself, so I not only have the experience, but I have the research in this video to back up the topic we're going to uncover today. Welcome to Mindset Monday. So a little fun fact here is that yes, I'm adopted and I've always had people approach me and say, what is it like to be adopted? And do you think that you have similar qualities and attributes to your birth parents? Or do you think it is like nature versus nurture? Which way is it? So I do have that experience, but also in my blog, I have referenced a 2016 study on happiness and genetics and behavior and genetics. And it does say, which I totally agree with, that 32 to 40% of your genetics does determine your happiness level and your ability to be happy. But you know, the bigger part of that is your environment and your lifestyle. So what do you do on a daily basis in order to keep yourself at an elevated happiness level? And what are you allowing into your life? And who are the people that support your happiness level on a daily basis? These are the questions that we are going to uncover and we are going to talk about in today's Mindset Monday. Early studies on the topic of genetics and happiness were mainly conducted with twins and twins reared apart. And these studies focused on whether it was one's upbringing that made most difference or whether their genes determined their level of happiness. Surprisingly, there was a very high concordance with identical twins that were raised apart and not so much for siblings in the same environment. So this would lead one to believe that it was more nature over nurture in that old debate. When they looked back at serotonin receptors, dopamine, and other contributors to this emotion, then at the personality traits that are partly dependent on them, they found that people who are chronically happier are often extroverted and agreeable. Extroverts also get lots of pleasure from their social lives and they usually are a little bit more dominant. And so all of these genes can play a huge factor in their levels of happiness and increased happiness. Moreover, fewer of those negative emotions like fear and anger and lack of self-confidence come into play for many of these individuals. Some people are born more fearful or more like the worry wart type. However, one interesting point is that this does not dictate a chronic emotional state for these people. So what's very interesting is that anyone, regardless of their biological propensities or uh, determining factors can actually elevate their happiness state. So what are three essential components of happiness? A study on the pursuit of happiness defined it in terms of high life satisfaction, frequent positive circumstances and infrequent negative ones. These constructs are what constitutes subjective well-being or chronic happiness levels. Chronic happiness defines the level of happiness over an extended period of time and not at one particular moment or day. In this regard, there are three primary factors influencing chronic happiness levels and they are one, life satisfaction, number two, meaning and purpose in life, and number three, feeling engaged in what you do. Life satisfaction is usually linked to positive emotions surrounded by your past, your present, and your future projections of what's to come. In a way, your past can influence your future life satisfaction, depending on how you frame that future in your mind. One pertinent example is thinking of the future in retrospect with past trauma, and as a result, you're trapped in a cycle of anticipating worst case scenarios. Living a life of purpose and meaning, which is number two, is the biggest part of our lives, isn't it? Because we want to be able to contribute and share and enhance other people's lives. We want to have goals and aspirations because having meaning and purpose allows you to align yourself to the values and beliefs that you hold near and dear. It also helps you elevate to a whole new level, feeling engaged in what you do. Now, that's number three. So whether it's the work that you engage with or the relationships you cultivate or the way that you spend your free time, whatever it is that you're doing, make sure that you are doing it well and that you are engaged in that activity. It has shown that people who focus and do these things with great intention are happier. The takeaway. While research does state that we can inherit certain tendencies like optimism, happiness, self-esteem, uh, and some of those traits, I am living proof and the blog and this video also show that studies are huge proof that you, even though you have a predisposition in one way to nature and the genes that you've inherited, there is so much more that you can do to live a satisfying life and be happy. And that is my ultimate goal for you.
So if you like this Mindset Monday, please go over to my website at www.amanda-desilva.com and you will see my coaching programs. You will also see a course that is perfectly suited to living your purpose and discovering meaning in life. Um, I hope that you will take me up on some of these activities and options for you to engage more with me. <clears throat> I'm very passionate about these topics, as you can tell. And the other thing I'd love you to do is to click below so that you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And each week when I upload these new Mindset Monday videos, you will be alerted and you'll be first to watch them. Thanks for spending time with me and I really hope we can work together in the future.